Hi all, so today I am doing a recreation of some nails by Bug Nails that I came across about a month ago and absolutely fell in love with, but I'm waiting until now to do them. So hopefully in a second, you will see the inserted video I took of me showing you the nails on Instagram. Okay, so I've sped this section up and I am doing this section voiceover. So I want a candy cane under the nail. And I bought a huge multi-pack off eBay of gold leaf. And it comes in all the colours of the rainbow. So I'm hoping to paint white lines. <coughs> candy cane lines first. I'm going to cure those. And then attach my gold leaf over the top so you should see a candy cane underneath the nail. Trying to save time I do actually finish all these off off camera because they ended up taking me over 20 minutes just to paint white lines <clears throat> and the total length of the video at the end is like an hour 20 and that was just filming the bits I wanted to film. So I did want it to be as real timey as possible, but I do actually think I'm going to have to voice over a lot of it and speed it up. Speed up the videos, because watching over an hour long video just seems like a bit of an ask. So I have painted them all. Now I've painted all the way to the top, but if you were doing these on a person's nail, you, you wouldn't need to. So I'm trying to decide between a foil gel or a gel glue. The gel glue would hold it steady but would it cure and I was worried if I put on the foil gel that the design would slide off the nail but in the end I go with the foil gel and when I'm top coating afterwards I just make sure I seal in all the edges. So I'm doing a really thin <coughs> oh, excuse me a really thin cure of base gel not base gel good lord foil gel foil glue and then I'm going to go over with my gold leaf. Obviously, I'm speeding a lot of these videos up as, as much as possible. So they've had a cure. And this is the red one. Now, I know gold leaf is flimsy, and this is going to sound really stupid, but it was a lot more flimsy than I thought it was going to be. A lot more flimsy um i was worried about it sticking to my hands so i do actually use my fluffy brush to to brush it on and try and stick it on and then in the end i just think sod it and i go in with my finger and rub it in now this stuff sticks everywhere and i mean everywhere i still have it stuck to my finger and my nail i have washed my hands three bloody times i have used gel cleanser and I now have sparkly green fingers with little red bits on my thumbnail. So I'm just scraping all of that from underneath. Unfortunately, I have gone out of the frame. But as you can see, the red shows through underneath and it gives the candy cane effect. And I will do the rest off of camera. Now I've done all the rest of them, as you can see. And all the leftover bits of foil I have put into these tubs. Now, when I order charms and stuff, they always come in these tubs, but I have I keep all mine in a big cabinet. So I keep the empty jars, and it always comes in useful for mixing acrylic, mixing glitters, in particular, the foils. Now, next time, if there ever is a next time, I will not use the foil. I will paint the white, and then I will paint over it red, for instance, to get the red from underneath. Or I will use top coat and chrome powders. I'm just putting a good layer of base coat on all of them and making sure to get the edges just so it stays and so my next layers of polish stick to the nail. This is heavily sped up because I am desperately trying to get the time of this video down. 
Okay, so I've cured that, and then I've got two layers of my favourite white by Bomb Pretty. And you can see the candy cane underneath. Now I have a white gypsum gel, and I am just going to smooth a layer over that just to give it a texture for the snow and the snow drifts. And then I'm going to sprinkle that before I cure it with a super, super fine, almost like a powder, um, shimmer glitter just to add a little bit of sparkle and this is the one i'll use so next i take a brush with a bit of gel cleanser on just to mark out where my paths are going to be and to brush them out so the path's like an indent and it's a different texture for the nail because i'm going to fill that path in with something else not quite sure what yet the and I'm just making sure they all line up together. So next I'm using the backing from a nail farm. And on the dull side, which is the back, I am drawing out, but pressing quite hard, my house. And I plan to fill that in on the other side with acrylic. Now, in hindsight, you are probably better off freehanding it to an appropriate, an approximate size, and then just filing it. It would save you the 10 minutes that I faffed around drawing my goddamn squares and rectangles. Now I'm going in with Copper Penny by CJP, which is like a gingerbread colour with shimmer. And I'm using my teeny tiny brush I usually use for petals. Now where I'm pressing the brush into the monomer it is to make sure I have no air bubbles in. And I'm just getting tiny little bits. And it keeps going out of focus. I think it's because I have so much stuff in the camera. But I'm just moving it into the shape I want it and then I'll leave it to dry and peel it. And the good th I'm using the One Monomer by CJP and what I like about it is that while you are still playing with it, it's fast drying if you put it on and leave it alone. But while you're still playing with it, it still stays moldable. So you can move it around all of you want. So these will be my little side panels and then I have my roof panels. In fact, that might be a roof panel. But what I do is I wait for that to go matte and almost dry. And then I roll a cuticle pusher over it. And it gives like little indent details, which I thought was quite cute. There you go, just like a little texture thing. When these are virtually dry, I do pull them off with my brush and move them to a separate form just so I can reuse the shapes because I only drew them out once each. So I'm just laying that down somewhere else to finish drying just so I can redo the shapes, which is why freeform might have been better because I could have done more than one and just filed them. Next, I'm going in with White Diamonds by CJP. And... I've not sped this one up as much because it's only a tiny clip and I'm going to use this to make little candy canes. Now obviously they won't be round and fully 3D, they will be like flat, but I still thought it would make a nice little detail. I'm going to try to build my gingerbread house. Now, to begin with, I use a gel glue that I was going to use for the gold leaf and put the torch in my mouth, just to be inventive, and attempt to cure it, but the gel is just too thin. I've left it in just to show you, show you that I had tried, and I go off camera because I literally have the torch in my mouth, and it just it has 
no stick. So I end up going to find my trusted Macart rhinestone glue. And this one works. I also have hold of the torch again just to flash cure it in place while resting it on my fingertip like that. So if you were going to try and build something like this, I'll have a go. You are going to need something like the rhinestone gel because it's thick or the you know the, the, the non-stick gel from Born Pretty because you could roll that into like a really thin sausage and then press your edges into it. Um, you could even stick it with acrylic, which now I'm thinking about and doing the voiceover, also another option. But do not try to use glue or gel glue because it is just plain not thick enough and it is not going to hold it there. Hard gel is possible, I think, but I think it, oh my voice is going, <clears throat> I think it would also depend on how thick it is. So this is it just curing here. I'm doing little takes in between just to show you it curing. So I'll flash cure with the torch and then I'll put it in. The so that has cured and I am just taking my little house and my macaque glue. And I am going to attempt to glue the roof on. And it turns out not only are my walls after all my faffing drawing uneven, my front and back walls are a little crooked and one side of the roof is bigger than the other. So definitely freehand on file. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All cured. I'm just gonna move him to one side and then I am going to clean off my palette. But I'm gonna add some base gel, a pale blue, and some little flakes that catch the light just to add a little more sparkle and texture. I'm kind of going for like, I don't know, differences on the nail, I suppose. I just thought it'd be nice if like that, I want it to be like a frozen pond. So it'd be nice if it could catch the light a bit. So I do that and put it into cure. And while that's curing, my little, Candy canes I made and little peppermint swirls. Do you call them peppermint swirls? That's what I'm calling them. And I just paint red details on those. The brown bits you can see at the bottom are logs. I had made logs to stack at the corner of the house, but in the end, I don't end up using them. Right, this is cured. So now I just put a coat of dark jelly blue over it just to add a little extra detail and these are some glitters I'm going to use I'm going to use the gingerbread men from Charlie's Nail Art as 3D gingerbread men to stand up I'm going to paint them and that little tube of glitter I showed you oh, that's base coat by the way I'm putting on my palette I'm going to use the red and the green as kind of like I don't know gumdrops sweets to to make a path to fill in the path I made because I didn't want to use polish I couldn't decide on a color so I just thought about base coat and some sequins so I'm just going to alternate them right along all the pathways on all of the nails so these are my tiny little gingerbread sequins and I have decorated part of my house because I stopped recording to answer the phone and forgot to press record again. So that has not been filmed, unfortunately. And neither has one of my gingerbread men because I looked up to pause the video in and, yeah, realised I had to start it. So I'm just using a little bit of white gel paint to give him his little gingerbread cuffs and then his little face with some tiny little eyes and oops yeah I flicked that right across the thingy and just some little buttons with green and red just to add some little detail so because I forgot to show you my house I'm showing you this bit 
but with the house I just literally bordered along the roof um, with the gel paint and I painted a little door with like a candy cane stripe around it and this is the pathway see there's my little gingy house I'm just turning the ruler was the only way I could think to put it actually in the lamp but as you can see I've just put him a little dot there and I'm just putting a little few red lines on the little candy cane bit and I decide to go up the sides of the house because when I make gingerbread at home it was it was Christmas Eve tradition when my daughter was little we used to make a gingerbread house every Christmas Eve I would make the gingerbread a day or two ahead just so it dried out a little and then every Christmas Eve we would we would have hot chocolate, watch crappy Christmas films or listen to crappy Christmas songs. The cheesier the better. Drink hot chocolate with peppermint in it and marshmallows and squirty cream. And we would decorate the gingerbread house. And by Christmas Day, Boxing Day, you could guarantee she'd already started eating it. I know a lot of people don't make them anymore because they never get eaten, but we just always found it fun. Okay, so now I have some green gel from, I believe it's Smiley's Glitter Star. And it's the, the 3D, 4D carving sculpture gel, whichever one you want to call it. I call it like nail plater. So I roll it into a ball and then kind of tweeze at the end to get the triangular shape. So I'm just trying to press that into the nail to make sure it stays stuck. And it's, I tried a different gel before this and it just wasn't having it. So it's all over my gloves. And I'm just using my very pointy tweezers just to tweeze it and make it more, more tree-like. Um, the, 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 the clips this end of the video aren't as sped up and cut short because I've actually managed to get the time down quite a lot we're down to at this point 27 minutes but I still have more clips to go and I'm editing as I go so I'll keep doing that for some of these nails and this one is the pond nail I do believe and we just plop that on and tweeze that on as well if you don't have pointy tweezers you could use a cocktail stick or a cuticle stick anything you fancy Okay, so next you will see me attempt to stick my gingerbread house. And I go for Old Faithful and I plan to add snow drifts around it, which is why I show you the gypsum gel. So I place the glue all over the base of my house. But I have not put it on a flat nail. I have put it on a nail with a severe goddamn C-curve. So... Old Faithful is not having it and my house is drunk and falling off. So I go in search yet again of my non-stick gel from Bomb Pretty. Still can't find it. Surprise, surprise. God only knows where that's gone. It's literally grown legs and run off. So I'm using this pink Aurora one that I got from Timu. It's um, got shimmer in it. But luckily, because I'm putting snow drifts on, the gypsum gel will cover that after, I have, after I've cured it, so you're not going to see it. But I basically press that into the base, and I've gone completely out of screen. And then I just use my pointy end of my stick just to pat that down. So I'm going to cure that, which you can obviously really, really see. And then I go over it with gypsum gel afterwards just to create a snow drift. And while that is curing, I decide to see if my gypsum gel is thick enough to cure the other decorations in place. You know, as 
so it would look as if a snowdrift has brushed against it and it's kind of keeping it upright quick answer is if you were extremely gentle yes it holds it there and it cures if however when you are rough trying to put them on your nails to show people what they look like no they will fall right out and the macart gel will have to come back out and glue them in place again but i'm just flash curing these in place in the gypsum gel and that's one of the little gingerbread men and then i give them a full nuke in in the in the in the nuke afterwards for a full 60 seconds but that just makes sure they don't fall out of place while they're cooking in there but i use the gypsum gel for the candy canes some little standy up snowflakes these do look quite a bit different from the ones bug nail has done i even forgot about i just looked back at the video while i've been editing and i forgot his snowman and it had such a cute snowman on but i forgot to make one um and mine has like th there's definite differences his car his little gingerbread house looks a lot better um but do not forget to check out his instagram page because he has some really awesome nails so that is all the mess and i finished decorating these off camera and these are what they look like some edges need neatening up there's my little gingerbread house i added little bits of gypsum gel to the trees and while after they're cured um i have painted the backs of the candy canes as well i couldn't paint them when they were loose on the paper because they were just going everywhere but what I'm going to do is I am going to neaten up the edges with a file and then I'm going to put them on my nails and show you what they look like. So are you ready? This is the underneath. Ignore the pink bits. That is the blue tack I could not get off. But yeah, you can see the candy cane effect. And this is what they look like. And I have crooked fingers so my nails always cross over. But there is the tree and the frozen lake and the little gingerbread men. The backs of the candy canes, as you can see. I tried to make it as all around as possible. But yes, thank you all for watching and hopefully watching to the end. Check out Bug Nails on Instagram. I'm not sure if they have a YouTube channel, but they definitely have an Instagram. And some of the nails on there are utterly fantastic. So this is my, my recreation and take on it. Not an entirely accurate recreation, so definitely heavily inspired by. I have done them once. I will not do them again. I loved the nails as soon as I saw them, but having attempted to recreate them, I definitely appreciate them a heck of a lot more because of all the effort that has gone into them, which is a hell of a lot. And for any clients that are watching these, no, you may not have these nails. Nobody is ever having these nails because I never want to do them again. I have enjoyed doing them, but there has been a lot of swearing, a lot of paddying, and they took close to four hours. So absolutely not. But I want to thank you all for watching. Um, it means the world that you're enjoying my videos please like and if you haven't subscribed already please do and i should have some some more videos out very shortly with a lot more christmas decorations on um some easy to do single designs and some some full sets of nails if you've enjoyed these videos leave me some christmas trees in the comments and if they have candy canes on the emoji button, candy canes too. I like some candy canes. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.